So this week we're going to be talking about one of the most popular topics on this channel and it's career tips for the supply chain. And I'm going to give a little bit of a personal story and that's coming right up. Okay, so as you may know, if you've been hanging around on the channel for a while, you'll know that some of the most commonly asked questions that I get are all about career tips and education and which university should I go to and how do I get to this university in Canada or the US or UK or whatever. Um, and because it's such a popular topic, this whole area of education and supply chain careers, I thought this week, maybe I'd just give a little bit of a personal perspective. And it's not all about education, in my view. So let me just explain what I mean. So um, I don't know kind of how well you know me. You probably don't know me at all. But if you've been to any of my seminars uh, around Australia and Southeast Asia, I very often talk uh, a little bit about my background, my backstory, if you like. So let me just give a minute or so on that. And it will kind of put things in perspective. So I went to school in the UK, I went to this fancy private school, um, and I got kicked out at the age of 15. I was a bit of a rebel, uh, a bit of a troublemaker, and I caused so much trouble for the school that the uh, headmaster said, your parents are wasting your money, you're off, you're gone, and at the age of 15, I was out of school. Uh, and so I guess the reason I tell you that is that sometimes we look at others around us and we look at others whose career perhaps we want to try and emulate um, and, and we think maybe that you know they've had it really easy um, and you often hear this you know about people that you see in the media and you find out once you get to know them that actually they've had a bit of a struggle so I guess I'm just sharing a bit of my story to illustrate that um, I, I may look like I'm successful, but it's taken decades of very hard work to get there. So what happened after I got thrown out of school at the age of 15? Uh, I actually joined the British Army. You could join at the age of 15 then. Um, and I joined as a soldier um, during my training. Um, I was kind of picked out as maybe having a, a little bit of talent. And maybe I was kind of hiding my talents a bit. Um, and fairly soon I was selected for officer training um, and then went through the Royal Military Academy Santos for officer training and I ended up doing a master's degree sponsored by, by the army and so on. So what's the point of all of that story? Well, if I had listened to people around me, like my teachers and family, way back when I was you know, 14 and 15, I would have come to the view that I was really going to make nothing of myself. Um, that I, I was really you know, headed for a dead end and that I was never going to have a successful career. I mean, I'd been told at school, you're stupid, you're dumb, you know, back in the days when teachers used to do that. Um, and I kind of got it into my head that I was stupid and dumb and would never amount to anything. And it was only that change of environment for me going into the military where I was pushed and I was taught about you know, teamwork and stretching myself and I was expected to step up and do things. That pushed me and it was a really great thing for me at the time because it kind of showed me that actually I had a bit of potential. Uh, and there was some great mentoring through that as well. I mean, my boss at the time um, suggested that I consider officer training and he pushed me for extra training to do that. Um, and through all of that, I ended up um, being commissioned in the British Army and, and had a great career. And like I said, went to university, uh, basically paid for by the army and so on. So that, that whole sort of um, early period of my life kind of pushed me along and, and helped me blossom a bit. So why is that relevant to you? Well, let's come back to some of those questions that I'm getting all the time about which university and which country should I go to? I don't think it's necessarily about that. Look, I mean, I think education is important. Um, it's very often the thing that gets you in the door if you're job hunting, you know, you're expected to have uh, you know, a certain level of qualification. That's kind of the ticket to get the interview. But I think a lot of people see education and particularly going to certain universities as, as their ticket to success. It's not. Absolutely, it's not. Um, it's just a tool that you're going to pick up along the way. It's a very important tool. Um, you're, you're going to learn some great stuff. But if you're not going to do anything with it, if you're not going to apply it, 
it's a waste of time and money. So I guess that's one of the key things that I just wanted to share with you this week, that if you're thinking about a career in supply chain and you've got ambition, you know, please just think about that formal education element as, as just a tick in the box. It's something that's required. It's something that's going to give you the knowledge, certainly, to, to get you started on your career. But it's what you do with that knowledge that's the important thing. It's what's in here and it's what's in here that is going to ensure your success. So once you've got that platform of education, what's next? Well, if I was to give some tips, generally it would be never stop learning. Um, I'm constantly learning new things. I mean, I'm 63, almost 64 years of age now. Um, for the last 20 years particularly, I have constantly been going to seminars, to training programs. I mean, I'm always in a coaching program of some sort. I'm in one now um, because I always want to learn from people who are better, better than I am at things, people who have broader experience than me. So I'm always involved in some sort of learning, coaching, education program. And of course, given my age, those people teaching me are normally half my age these days. But that's great because they've been brought up in a different environment and I can learn so much from them as well. So never, ever stop learning, either you know from others around you, uh, through different experiences at work, uh, through informal and formal training programs. You know, one of the things I always say to people is join local associations. There are, there are some fantastic associations all around the world for people who work in supply chain and logistics, for you to get together, for you to network, for you to have access to training and education programs. If you're not in one of those, get in one of those. Um, push yourself to learn new things. Push yourself to engage with people that perhaps you wouldn't normally engage with. Um, there was a great bit of advice given to me many years ago by a, men, a business mentor who basically said, mix with the sort of people that you want to become. Uh, and, and what did he mean by that? Well, if you want to be a successful senior manager in supply chain, start mixing with successful senior managers in supply chain. And, and those people you can mix with uh, very often at these associations and conferences and, and all sorts of events like that. So start to mingle with people who are already doing what you'd like to be doing in the future. So, you know, that continual learning is, is really, really important. Um, and you can do that online and offline, of course, as well. There was a great interview that I did uh, a few months back, actually, with a guy called Mark Powell. And let's put a link to the Mark Powell interview up here. And one of the things that really came out of that, and he's had an amazing career in supply chain. Mark and I actually went to university together. Uh, in terms of experience and, and just brain power, Mark was here and I was here. Um, but I've learned a fantastic amount from Mark at, at university. And, and since, to be honest, we've come across each other quite a few times since. But one of the key points that he makes in that interview is don't be afraid to stretch yourself and try things that you feel you're not quite ready for. And, and I think if I look back over my last 20 or 30 years, that's probably been a key component, component of my success too. I did things when I didn't quite feel ready to do them. Uh, and I surprised myself. And yeah, I might have struggled a little bit to begin with, but I soon sort of floated back to the surface and got on with it. So don't wait until you've got everything lined up. This is a point that Mark makes in that interview. Don't wait until you've got the exact right levels of education. Don't wait until you've got all the right jobs on your CV. You know, don't wait until you come across the right opportunity necessarily. Just grasp opportunities as they come up. And so again, if I you know illustrate that with my own experience, I, I had a, a great first career, if you like, in the British Army took every opportunity that came my way. I mean, if you think, I, I was thrown out of school at the age of 15. Um, I, I did a little bit more education when I joined the army at that age. I had no first degree and, and the army sponsored me to go and do a master's degree at Cranfield, you know. Was I a little bit nervous? Absolutely I was. You know, it's my first time near a university. But I did really well. I did well on my course. Um, and, and so, a lot of it is, is can be down to self-belief and just trusting yourself that you can do things. So that was a bit of a leap of faith. Um, 
Another leap of faith was actually resigning from the British Army um, when I was doing really well to move to another country um, to actually join industry as a consultant. And, you know, friends and family said, Rob, you're nuts. Uh, but I made the move. I arrived in Australia with no job, no house. Um, and I often relate the story to people. I think within two weeks, we'd bought a house, uh, we got the kids into school and I'd found a job. So, you know, sometimes you've just got to have a little bit of faith in yourself and go for it. Um, the, the next sort of hurdle was when I decided whilst I was enjoying that job working with a consulting company, I'd much rather enjoy myself running my own consulting company. So about three years after that, uh, I, I then left. And again, friends and family were going, you're nuts, what are you doing? Starting your own business, it's risky. And that's when I started Logistics Bureau back in 1997. Uh, never looked back since. You know, it felt like the right thing to do. Was I ready for it? No, absolutely not. Uh, but I felt I was ready enough to have a go. And it was great success, you know, still is. So when those opportunities come along, you're the one, you're the one deep down who knows whether this is something worth going for. And, and certainly, you know, listen to advice from those around you. But very often that advice can be holding you back a little bit because they're trying to protect you. They don't want to see you fall flat on your face. They don't want to see you fail. Uh, and so you have to temper that advice that you're hearing sometimes. And if you feel deep down that this is something you want to do, have a go for it. And as you're progressing through your supply chain career, opportunities will come up. Put your hand up, even though you don't feel quite ready for it. You know, push yourself, learn new things, get that advancement. It's really, really important. So that's really kind of what I, I wanted to share this week, because, um, you know, whilst people ask a lot about education and, you know, formal training and so on in supply chain, I think it's important that we also talk about mindset in, in careers and, and having the right mindset, having the right ambition uh, and faith in yourself to just sometimes have a go at things. And I just really wanted to share that with you this week. So if you're watching this and, and you have some tips for those who uh, are subscribed to this channel, you know, tips on career advancement and, and education and training, whatever, do please share those tips down below because it's great to be able to share tips, not just from me, but from, from the rest of the audience with those who are perhaps early on in their supply chain career or just starting out. So love to see those tips coming up. And if I was to summarize, you know, what would be my, my sort of three key tips coming from this, which has been a bit of a ramble, um, never stop learning. Never, ever stop learning. And as I mentioned, I'm always in a coaching program, always in a learning program, because we can never know enough. There's always new things to learn. Um, secondly, grasp those opportunities that come along. Even if you feel you're not quite ready for it, jump for it, you know, push yourself, stretch yourself. Uh, and probably the third thing would be, and I'm always talking about this, mix, network with others in your industry, network and mix with those who you'd aspire to be like, you know, those who are maybe way ahead of you on the career ladder so that you can learn from them, learn how they think and look at the world and approach problems and that sort of thing. So there we go. End of the ramble. Um, I hope that was of some use to you. Uh, if you have any further comments or whatever, do please comment down below. I love to see lots of comments. I do make sure that I reply to all of those myself. Uh, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing. There's a red subscribe button down there. And if you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time we have a new video coming out. And generally they come out on a Tuesday evening, Sydney, Australia time. So thanks for watching. I'll look out for your comments and see you next week.